Yeah. So, so Charlie, we play the music just for a short yeah. time before, you know, while I'm talking. Yeah. And I'll, 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 I'll like sing you go down, and then I'll sing you all the way down. Are you guys ready? Okay. Welcome back to Midpoint. My name is Sean Canan. Friday is May 1st. It's celebrated around the world as May Day or International Workers' Day. It's also called Labor Day. Today on Midpoint, we'll talk about May Day celebrations in the Tampa Bay area and about labor rights and immigration rights. And we'd like you to call in and tell us your stories as well. The number is 813-239-9663. You can email your question or comment to dj at wmnf.org. You can also text us at 813-433-0885. My guests in the studio today are Marisol Marquez and Gage LaCharity with RISIS in Tampa and Tampa Bay SDS. Welcome to Midpoint. Hi there. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming down. Uh, who can tell me the history of May Day? Uh, okay, so uh, May Day kind of began in uh, 1886 with uh, the Haymarket Square riots of Chicago. Um, workers were fighting for uh, the eight-hour eight hour workday, uh, eight hours eight hours of work, eight hours of sleep, eight hours of rest. And uh, in the context of uh, these riots, um, there were police saboteurs who uh, threw bombs into the crowd, and there were nine uh, workers who uh, died in the explosion and so uh, ever since then around the world um, we've celebrated uh, the sacrifice that those uh, nine workers made uh, and have uh, you know continued the fight for uh, labor rights and uh, the rights of all people. And you're continuing that this Friday in Tampa where and when? Uh, it's going to be this Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, it'll be right in front of the ICE office, the Immigration Customs and Enforcement Office. Uh, in Ebor, which is located at 1624 East 7th Avenue. Uh, and, you know, we're going to be there with students, we're going to be there with other community members. Uh, there's people from the Peace uh, Activist uh, Network that are coming. They're from Hernando County and Pasco County. They'll also be traveling that long voyage to, to be there with us. The show you're listening to is Midpoint, and the people that you're hearing are Marisol Marquez and Gage Charity with RISIS in Tampa and Tampa Bay SDS. And if you'd like to join the conversation, the number is 813-239-9663. And well, I saw this disturbing uh, response, I guess, to your, um, your May Day celebration online. It's a picture of this group called ROF, and it's a star with a, a rifle on it. And it says, it tells people where your rally will be in Ybor City, and it says, all ROF organizations, secessionists, anti-communists should attend and it goes on to say, violent encounters are possible, prepare accordingly. What's this group ROF? Uh, so the ROF is, uh, stands for Republic of Florida, and so they are a uh, right-wing um, secessionist movement. They want the uh, state of Florida to secede from uh, the United States. And so uh, they've kind of been um, attacking uh, Students for Democratic Society across the state of Florida lately. Uh, in Tallahassee, our Students for Democratic Society uh, chapter actually held a rally against the Klan uh, in the community. And so in response, uh, the ROF, as well as the League of the South, um, sort of stepped in to have a counter protest. Uh, but, you know, we're not worried about them. Uh, we don't expect them to show up. And if they do, then, uh, you know, we're not scared. Yeah, well, um, you know, it, this isn't the first time that something in Tampa, which is organized around May Day or against police brutality, has ever happened. Uh, we know that sometimes cops show up and they, um, you know, are undercover and they're, they're yelling things at us that are very anti-whatever we're trying to organize. So, you know, we just keep on doing what we're doing. We're peaceful activists and we're here to simply organize our own meetings. So that's what we're going to do. The groups that are involved, Raices in Tampa, for people who don't know what that is, tell us. Yeah, uh, Raices in Tampa, it, it means Roots in Tampa, and it's basically a, a lot of workers here in Florida who are organizing uh, against basically police brutality, brutality or also against the suppressive uh, immigration laws that are in existence, not only in Florida but also across the country. A lot of people can't drive to, to work, something very basic like that, and uh, you know, being deported means that you will never have the chance to become uh, a lawful permanent resident or even a citizen. So is that, what, what's the connection then between immigration rights and labor rights? Well, in 2006, uh, because of a, a law, the Sense and Brenner Law, uh, which was going to be passed in 2005, and in 2006 it was going to be heard. 
uh, what ended up happening was that law would have made it a complete felony for somebody who was uh, caught aiding an undocumented person, and that could have been just a family member who, you know, happened to have some kind of um, awful permanent residency, and they would have been charged with a felony for living with someone who was undocumented. Uh, you know, people were completely upset by that, and in the millions they took to the streets in L.A. and Chicago, and ever since then, in 2006, it, it was reclaimed. Uh, by the immigrants and you know they've united with workers to fight for something that, that is better all, all across but you know still has that that message for the undocumented. Even here in Tampa at the corner of Columbus and Dale Mabry for years there were giant for, for, for this area I would think several hundred people celebrating at that corner on May Day and it was I mean it took us a little bit by surprise if I can say that in, in the sense of how quickly it escalated and and people uh, really got into this for for a year, starting with 2006, and it went on for several years there. Yeah, yeah, we, we did see uh, people who, you know, to this day have probably never united again. Uh, we, we saw people who were very wealthy and people who were very poor taking to the streets together and demanding that this, you know, repressive measure that was taken against the undocumented, against Chicanos, against Central Americans be, you know, taken down and not happen. What is SDS and why are they involved in, in a labor struggle like this? Uh, yeah, so Students for Democratic Society is sort of a uh, broad progressive network of uh, students. Uh, we're, you know, we're across the country uh, from, you know, Utah to uh, Iowa to Minnesota to here. And, uh, you know, last year we kind of uh, rallied around the slogan of uh, education for all. And so we uh, started a fight that was essentially fighting for uh, the right for uh, undocumented people to have in-state tuition. We rallied for uh, the right for undocumented uh, students to be have access to financial aid. And so, uh, you know, we, we see, like, ourselves as, you know, being able to play a positive role uh, in these movements, uh, and we have uh, over the last year, or well, over the last many, after over many years. Uh, and... Um, you know, uh, we, we're here to help, and uh, hopefully we'll have a large student contingent uh, to join everybody. And you, there are other groups that I'm going to read from your, this is from the Facebook event page. It's called Tampa May Day, hashtag not one more, the number one deportation. And there's, you're listing Casa Chiapas, Tampa, Florida, Peace Action Network, Block the Boat, Tampa. So these are other groups that are getting involved and, and joining your organization. Why? What, what's the common theme, I guess, with all these groups? Well, as we know, you know, uh, the, those who are suppressed are, again, the, the undocumented Central Americans, Chicanos, they're all lumped into the same category. You know, if, if you look like you might not be from the U.S., you're going to be stopped in places like Arizona. Uh, they're going to ask you for your papers. Uh, people are very, you know, anti that. And, and block the boat uh, here in Tampa, you know, they, they fight with those who are from Palestine. And as we know, in Chicago, not too long, not too long ago, there was a Palestinian activist named Rosmia Oda who, you know, was being, uh, she was threatened with being deported to a, a place that no longer is, exists, which is Palestine. And, you know, Im immigration is something that, or, or deportations are something that are, they're held over people who are undocumented or, or were once undocumented, and, and that's just a very powerful to the tool that they use against activists just like ourselves. So they're uniting with us because of, you know, just being anti-deportation, but they're also going to be uniting with us because on May Day, it's been historically the place where people have organized uh, for, for worker jobs. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, 88.5 FM. We're also streaming online right now at WMNF.org. My guests in the studio today are Marisol Marquez, engaged La Charity with Rices in Tampa and Tampa Bay SDS. And my name is Sean Canan, and you're listening to the Monday Midpoint program. It's 1225 in the morning, in the afternoon, rather. And we'd like to hear from you. The number to call is 813 Two three nine nine six six three. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org or send us a text at 813-433-0885. At the top of the hour, we heard a, a short story on the NPR headlines about this strike in on the West Coast. I'm going to read a little bit more of that from the Associated Press, and then you can let me know your thoughts. Truck drivers who haul goods from the nation's busiest port complex in Southern California are walking off the job in a dispute over their wages and employee status. Today's strike at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach comes after a weekend vote from the Teamsters. It wasn't immediately clear how many truckers would walk off the job, but they weren't expected to shut down all port business. So th um, with May Day approaching, you have this trucker strike out on the West Coast. Yeah, uh, well, the, the great people that are over in the LA port, you know, they throughout history, they've been uh, the Long People's Union, which, you know, was named 
recently, or renamed from the Longshoremen's Union to the Long People's Union, uh, we've seen them all the way up in Seattle, you know, be led by, by very progressive people, even people who were communists, you know, and uh, were attacked for being communists, and they organized uh, for people's liberation, for the, the liberation of people who were oppressed in this country. And, you know, in 2008, these same port workers in L.A., they, they took to this, to, they, they shut down their, their work, and they said they weren't going to work because they were against uh, the Afghanistan war, for example. And uh, they're, they're not working at this time, but they're also going to be amping it up on May 1st. So it's great to see that, you know, May 1st is taking this turn. Uh, since 2006, it's still continuing, and it seems like in 2015 it's going to be a pretty big one. What's been the response from organized labor here in Tampa to your action on Friday? Well, uh, we think it's been very good. It's been very positive. Uh, people who we didn't expect, you know, like you said, uh, who would be uniting with us have been. and. You know, we, we see people like the ROF who are, frankly, just a joke to us, you know, who are supposedly uh, organizing against us, but, you know, we're here to demand workers' rights, but we're also here to demand that, you know, national oppression against Chicanos, against the undocumented, against Central Americans stop, and uh, we want liberation and not deportation. So, you know, anyone who unites around that, anyone who wants to have, you know, overtime pay and not be, uh, have their wages <coughs> stolen from them should come out and unite with us. Well, we have a phone call. We're going to go now to Sean in Tampa. Hi, Sean. What would you like to say? Your guests are obviously in favor of uh, granting in-state tuition to uh, uh, what they call undocumented uh, aliens here in Florida. I just have a question. Uh, suppose uh, you have a, a child of it. Of, this one doesn't uh, work for you. It's, uh, he controls your mic. To, uh, you know, doesn't spend the full 365 days. If the lights are off, days, we can talk. Okay. Previous 365 days here in Florida. Do you think they should still get uh, in-state tuition? Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, as uh, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, last year the uh, Florida Dream Act was passed, uh, which actually granted in-state tuition to uh, undocumented students on the uh, condition of having gone to three years of. Uh, High school. Uh, I and uh, I think that it it is fair because uh, you know undocumented people do uh, contribute a great amount to a, to the economy. Um, you know they pay a great amount of taxes uh, while while reaping like very little of the benefits uh, that are actually uh, you know they're, that they're actually paying for. And so I think it's you know only fair. They're they're Floridians just like uh, I am. Uh, yeah. They're not covered. Right, uh, that, that, that's what you call typically a migrant farm worker, and they are definitely not covered under this. Uh, someone who's a migrant farm worker experiences some of the worst conditions in the workplace. You know, they're, they're children who are sometimes working, but they would never qualify for this. This is a, a typical misconception. It's also typical to misconceive that they're, they're reaping off the benefits of financial aid. Financial aid does not apply to someone who's undocumented in the state of Florida and in very little states across the country. Texas is probably one of the only states that, you know, allows someone who's undocumented to have financial aid. So the term illegal alien is somehow better than undocumented immigrant? I don't understand your point. I mean, there's people in Arizona, like, you know, Sheriff Joe jo Arpaio, who are basically on the same page that you are on, and, you know, he demands that people who are just walking down the street who might not look white, you know, bring out their papers and documentation to prove that they're somehow, you know, a citizen. about the way that the U.S. has gone to countries like, you know, Honduras uh, and bombed their people there and then caused a coup 
overthrown their government, and then that somehow forces people from Honduras or Central America to come, uh, you know, through the treacherous ways that they do into the U.S. because of the policies of America, because of people like, oh no, no, it's not a separate issue. It's exactly the same issue that you're that we're talking about here. These people do not want to come into the U.S. They're forced to, you know, they want to survive. They're they're being they're being killed off in their countries. Their their governments are being o overthrown by our government. And I think people like us, it's not, it's not a separate issue, but they're not. <laughs> Sean, thanks for that call. So what about that last point that he made? It, 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 the, the citizenship is a, a gift, and it's really easy for someone who's been undocumented for years and years and years, and then all of a sudden it's, they're going to get a gift from the United States government. Is that how it works? That is definitely not how it works. I'm not sure what he's been reading or what he's been watching, but that is definitely, definitely how the system does not work. My parents, for example, uh, are Mexican immigrants, and for a long time they were undocumented. There is no way that they would have been able to presently uh, be able to get in line somehow and then wait forever for who knows how many years, 35 years, 50 years, and if one day somebody decides, hey, you know, we want to grant you lawful permanent residency, now you have to prove that after all, all these 50 years you are somehow going to be a good citizen, you know, someone who's a, a good law-abiding citizen. When the system already targets you, ha you, you have a target on your back, you know, when you're walking in the U.S. If you look like you might not be, again, white, then, you know, they're going to target you, they're going to repress you, they're going to handcuff you, put you in jail. They're going to make it possible so that you do not have any kind of way of becoming a lawful permanent resident or even a citizen. All right, thanks so much for that call, Sean. Um, unfortunately, I think you dropped off the line. I was going to ask what your preferred term is. Um, you, you said you didn't prefer undocumented immigrants. Maybe you can um, email us back with uh, with what your what you think a, a more accurate term would be, because um, you know that's something that we want to strive for is is accuracy. And if you think that if you for whatever reason you think that we're getting it wrong, let's hear what your alternative is. We have other people waiting online. Let's uh, hear from John in Tampa. Hi, John. John, uh, do you have any anything to say about that? Uh, you know, uh, I I I think that you know why why do why do poor people have to pay income tax? You know, uh, it's it's unfortunate, and there is like absolutely you know the system wants to keep people you know poor people down. The system wants to keep uh, you know certain people on top and certain people on the bottom. And uh, you know, I completely I complete I I'm asking the same question. <laughs> So John, thanks. Thanks for bringing up those those um, issues that definitely pertain to labor and and working people. Um, so I, I appreciate you bringing those up for discussion. Let's go now to Mike and Brandon. Hi, Mike. You're on the air. Very good. What's on your mind? Back in the day, here come the European settlers. They're on their boat, and as they get to the shores of the, of, of the country or the continent, you have a bunch of uh, Native Americans there, and uh, they uh, flash their badges, their NAIS, Native American the Immigration Services, um, and, uh, you know, show us the papers and pay this fine. I think what gets lost in, the, in, in all this conversation is we stole the freaking country from people, and now, now that we are the ones who basically rule it, we're preventing other people from coming to this country. It makes absolutely no sense. That's... I... I love that you. Uh, Can you turn her mic on? I love that you make that point. Um, you know, nobody ever wants to talk about the fact that you know in the Mayflower 
uh, landed here, yes, there were already people here. It wasn't discovered by, you know, by this person. It was, it was already a land that was, you know. The Native Americans were here. Uh, a lot of the, what now we now know as Chicanos or Mexican Americans were already here. You know, when the, the African slaves were brought over, they, they were all, all of a sudden, you know, forced to, to be a part of this country. So you make very good um, historical points, and I think that it's conveniently left out of the history books. Uh, you know, when children are taught history and, and all about Thanksgiving Day and elementary schools, none, none of this is ever brought up. They make it seem like it was just, you know, everyone hanging out at the lunch table and, and saying, oh, of course we give up our land, of course. some problems too. Um, you know, if, if you, you remember correctly, uh, people who were deemed, you know, unfit to enter the country were left and abandoned, uh, you know, on this island. Uh, but, you know, I, I think like throughout the history of the U.S., immigration has always been something that, you know, the, the colonizers who at one point did settle here, uh, they, they took very, very forceful, forceful means to try to make it possible for them to be the ones to flourish. Uh, you know, you still had people trying to immigrate back in like the 30s from Mexico, and, and they were met, you know, very forcefully over the border, uh, which was at that time still being created. So, you know. Mike, thanks so much for your call. Let's let them let's let them answer. Thanks so much. What would you say about that? Uh, well, first of all, I'm Chicana. Uh, my parents are the ones who are from Mexico. I, I was born in Florida, and you know, if you remember historically, uh, the southwest of the U.S. was you know taken at force from Mexico. So that's why I'm Chicana. But um, uh, you know, I I agree that there should be some kind of reparations. But who would we be demanding it from? You know, there's a lot of people here who are who are at fault for the fact that Mexico is currently repressed. Um, but, you know, the conquistadors themselves, they were European and they, they were on a mission to make sure that, you know, religion, or they used the excuse of religion to try to colonize, uh, you know, what is now known as South America and Mexico. So, you know, we're, we're still, we're still very, uh, that's very much in our minds whenever we do organize, but I think with, with what we have presently and in front of us is the system that's trying to continue repressing the undocumented and by effect, you know, people like myself, like a Chicano who's, you know, a U.S. citizen, do have to, you know, suffer the consequences for people thinking that someone who's undocumented is stealing everything from, from people who are poor, you know, just like you and I. So, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for that call. Uh, you're listening to the voice of Marisol Marquez and Gageless Charity. They're with Rice in Tampa and Tampa Bay SDS. And we're talking today about May Day or International Workers' Day. They have a celebration on Friday in Ybor City. And this is the Midpoint Program. My name is Sean Canan. It's 1240 in the afternoon, and we'd like to hear from you. The number to call is 813-239-9663. You can text us to 813-433-0885 or email us at dj at wmnf.org. Uh, we have Stephen on the line in St. Petersburg. Hi, Stephen. What's up? in all fairness to both countries, Mexico and the U.S., and the 
Thanks for that call, Stephen. That's that's a good question. Um, well, yeah, definitely. If you're you know if you're Mexicano, Central American, and you cross the border, that's the moment that you become undocumented. Uh, again, people who are coming from these countries on the on the beast, you know, which is the train that go, goes through Central America into the U.S. Uh, they're, they're terrible conditions, but once you set foot on, on this land, it's not like for, for a Cuban who's, you know, taking the, the boat and coming into Florida. When, once they set foot on here, you know, one foot on dry land, they're, they're immediately handed uh, citizenship. You know, every, every time we talk about immigrants, we never remember that, you know, Cubans are granted citizenship the moment they walk in, and it's, it's very much uh, having to do with their political uh, representation in Cuba. They're a socialist country. Uh, in Mexico, they're not socialists. They're actually a puppet of the U.S., and uh, we can't set shop uh, up there if we if we want to. Uh, if somebody wants to go in and buy this land from you know a very poor person in Mexico, you can. Uh, and there is no in in no way the same kind of uh, measures that the U.S. takes on other countries coming from people in Central America or Mexico. Uh, if you remember if you rem remember history very well. Uh, countries like Honduras that have a much more or had a much more progressive government, uh, you know, they were they were set up in a coup against their own government by the U.S. So uh, we have to remember that these facts make it very very possible for the U.S. to be able to do what it does and to pin us against people like those who are from Mexico or Central America. Some of the people who are undocumented immigrants uh, cross the border without any kind of documentation whatsoever, but also a lot of people get a visa and then get a job or, or whatever, and they overstay their visas, and now they become undocumented, but they did have, uh, I guess, official U.S. government permission at first and to yeah. Ar arrive. Yeah, I'm really glad you bring that up, Sean, because, um, you know, with Raices in Tampa being a part of a broad broader network called Legalization for All, we are pretty much, uh, in a way, opposed to these temporary visas. Uh, what, what it does is it, it dangles this, you know, promise to people in Central America or Mexico and says, Come into the U.S., we'll have you work, we'll give you this visa, you'll be here for 11 months, and once those 11 months are over, you better come over here and report back, and we'll deport you back, and you know you can get a job if you want. Never do, do uh, the people actually get told that when they're in the U.S., they're just going to be overworked, they're not going to be given overtime pay, they're not going to be given health care. If they get hurt, God forbid, uh, you know, working in these terrible conditions, then they're going to be expected to suck it up and never complain about it, you know? And uh, all the while, this is a very uh, recyclable labor. It's very cheap. It's very cost effective for the U.S., and that's why they get away with doing it. Tell me about your hashtag. Ha oh, so, so it's hashtag not the number one more deportation. Yeah, that's uh, that's something that came uh, into effect by the National Day Labor Organization. Uh, Andilon is what we call them. Uh, they're a, they're an amazing nonprofit from the southwest of, of the United States. And they organize with, uh, you know, a lot of people who are trying to help the undocumented. They organize with the undocumented. A lot of them are undocumented. And, you know, we, we love the hashtag, not one more. Uh, it's, it's definitely something that's been claimed by, by the undocumented themselves. Uh, just like when Obama tried to use, you know, the, the Chicano term, si se puede, or yes we can, in his presidential campaign, which frankly is a slap in the face considering that he's re deported, uh, you know, a record high amount of deport uh, immigrants, I mean. Uh, you know, not one more is something else that's come out of this movement for, for equality for the undocumented. You're, t you're talking about the a record number of deportations. Uh, there was a time in the mid-2000s where there were more and more people crossing the border from Mexico into the U.S. What's happened to the rate of, of um, migration into the U.S. since, since like seven or eight years ago? Yeah, uh, if we remember again, uh, I keep mentioning 